Hello everyone, this is Gali and welcome to a new episode of How to Draw Dragons. Today we're going to learn how to make hind legs and dragon sitting. As you can see, I have looked for many different kinds of references from many places and I compiled some of them for you. So here we can see many skeletons from dogs to cats to horses and then a tiger, a dragon sculpture, a dog sitting in front view, one of my favorite dragon pictures, which is this white dragon from Cirello Cabral, and a zebra. All of these is just to exemplify dragons sitting or creatures laying down and what the hind legs do when they're doing that. So first I would like to do some studies. So I lowered the opacity on my drawings and I traced on top of them some simple skeletons, like simple figures, just to see how they work. And that's why I recommend everybody do that with their own reference so they can understand what a, a creature is made of, right? Like what the bones are and the structures. Because if we don't know anatomy, then we cannot really make them work. So in this case, for example, I got the skeleton of different animals and one is a side view and one is a three-quarter view. And if we ignore the rest of the body and we just focus on the legs, we can see that they have the hip bones, the coccyx, and then you see that they have specific bones together that make the legs. And they have a specific starting point, just like this one on this side, then the knee. And the same happens with this one. They have a specific starting point, then the knee. This one, for example, this part is longer than this part, and it depends on the animal. And because we're making dragons, which can be created with many different animals, I recommend we just look for many animals that we want to, to use as a reference. So, for example, in this image from Norman Workshop, we can see the similarities of the hind leg of different animals. For example, humans. This is a bear, this is a horse, and this is an extinct camel. But as you can see, we all have kind of the same things, just in different forms and shapes. It's almost the same thing. Everybody has like a fibula, a tibia, a femur, and everybody has a knee in this way. Like, it looks different on everybody but it, it has the same purpose. So then we can see, for example, this one does not have a lion, but we can see that it could be the same thing. The lion would have the knee, just like this, right? And then it would have the tibia, and then it would have the little the bottom part, which would be this. doing it exactly as it is because it's underneath all the body but you can kind of try to see what other animals have based on that reference so we also have to google for example the reference of fem feline anatomy to do this correctly but you can kind of picture it by yourself in a very quick exercise if you trace on top of it So that's, what, that's what's fun about references, that you can get to understand something and then replicate it in a different way. So in this case, for example, the cheetah is interacting with its environment, which is a rock. So the legs are curved on top of it. And that's really important when you're trying to make a creature believable, is that they have to interact with their environment. So we're going to make our own example. So with this one, you can see that the dragon, of course, it's a figurine, it's fantasy. But aside from all the body and the arms, which we saw in a different video, their legs are also on top of a rock. So we go by what we learned from the other reference we grabbed, is that he would have hip bones, then he would have this, then the knee, then this, and then the leg. 
So it's pretty much just trying to see the similarities between the different things. So in the case of this dog, which is looking forward, you just have to, it's like a puzzle. You get the little pieces and you just put them together. And it takes practice, of course, it's not so easy. Because once you draw this, then what do you do, right? Well, my recommendation would be looking for muscles. So in the case of this dragon here, I love that it's also on a rock and you can see how it interacts with the rock. It's not just floating there, it has pressure. So when he applies pressure, he creates wrinkles. So he has a knee here, right? He's not just standing there, doing nothing. So there's a knee. That's great reference, for example, because you can see how it interacts with the environment. You can also do this with laying down animals, referencing, for example, this, this part here, this part here, this part here. It's just the basics of a simple skeleton, which then you can just put the muscles on top and then create your creature. So this might look complicated, but the more you look into it, the more you understand the parts that make a whole, the parts that make the animal or the creature you want to make, that's where you can create your own dragon because then you will be able to understand more of the anatomy of what you want to create. So for example, in this case, we can have like little head of our dragon the rib cage. Let's say we want it to have like the tail curled or maybe a little lower perhaps and he's sitting on a rock. So in this case for example if I made the tail too high up I can always make it lower and I can google references for different animals and see that I can make for example like a cat I would like to have his legs like this. And now we understand that this could be the knee. And then this is the belly. And this is the front paws and such. So it's like very simplistic, the first step, the skeleton. But because there's so many different kinds of dragons you can make, there's so many different poses you can put them in. For example, like an Asian dragon that will be longer. How does a dragon sit, right? It would be more complicated. But it's almost the same thing, like they would have uh, hip bones. You know, they would have hip bones. And they would have this, then the other part, and the leg. So this one is not sitting, but it's floating. And maybe some dragons can curl up on top of mountains and rocks. And there's so many ways that you can make a sitting dragon. And by using these examples, you can kind of get an idea of that. Let's see, let's cover this one first. I'm just gonna fill it up with white so we can see. So we have, for example, this is a cheetah, but we're going to make a dragon out of the cheetah. So imagine we have a dragon, and it's looking a certain way. I'm just using this loosely as reference. The anatomy doesn't have to be perfect at the first try when you're doing the sketch. You just have to try to understand, like the head, then the spine. In this case, it just you know, could keep going for the tail. And then we see how this part, for example, goes like this here. And the muscles are rippling. We 
we can see that before the tail there's like this muscle here and you can kind of see the other one jutting from here they're not the same animal obviously but you can kind of play with it to add wings you can like reference bats etc so it's that way of using reference and applying it when you see it that will help you create many different dragons in different poses because you can understand what's going on underneath and one of my greatest um, sources of poses is just looking at animals and pictures of them like there's so many ways one animal can sit and what they can do like for example we had this one we had the dog you can create a sitting dragon just based on that dog like having their little head looking at the front with their long neck and then the shoulders and then this front pose just like this little belly and then you can have the legs, right? And then the tail probably want it here with the folded wings in the back. So you can grab any animal really and practice on what you want to do. So this is like what I do. That doesn't mean you have to do it this way, but I highly recommend looking for reference, learning from anatomy in real life, and you can get inspiration from other artists, but my recommendation is looking for real life because some other artists might have mistakes in their anatomy or in what they're doing, and you might end up copying those mistakes. So it's better if you just go reference from reality. That way, when you get your own style and whatever not, you can then copy other people without you know, adapting to their mistakes. So that's all for now, guys. I really hope this helped you. If you have any questions or any suggestions, please comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you can see the new updates. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.